Hi there, I'm Black Bright, I'm broadcasting out of the UK and if it's the first time to my channel, welcome. You can subscribe, like, share, depending on whether you think the information I'm sharing with you will be of use to someone else. Now today um, I was asked to talk about the new um, legislation that affects landlords. Um, I don't know how many of you are landlords who will be watching this video, but hey, I decided to do it anyway. Um, I didn't even realise that there were so many changes. Um, but I'm going to have to read them off because it's not an area I'm familiar with and hopefully you'll find it helpful. So the Tenants' Fees Bill was passed into law in February 2019. It's coming into effect on the 1st of June. This means that as of the 1st of June, landlords will not be able to charge any fees. Well, I shouldn't say that. Um, not that they won't be able to charge any fees, but they won't be able to charge like the inventory fees and, you know, the credit check fees. Um, you know, to make sure that the tenant is um, is OK, you know, when they go to the banks or they go to the employers and they make sure that the references come back OK. Um, that will now be the landlord's responsibility, not the tenant. Also, the inventory, that's going to be the landlord's responsibility. Um so, landlords and letting agents will not be able to charge fees, which is kind of good because when you're struggling to get a place to live, it must be really difficult to have to kind of um, secure all that additional funding. I can understand from the landlord's point of view, they want to be sure that the tenant that they have is going to be reliable, has a little bit of dosh so that they're not going to be hard up. And this is their way of trying to find out if this particular tenant, number one, really wants the room and number two is capable of maintaining the room. And they can usually tell that whether or not um, how much a tenant is prepared to put together to get the room. It doesn't always work that way because sometimes tenants put themselves in debt and um, in order to get through to a property. So I'm glad that a lot of these um, fees are being banned. Um, and also capping deposits. So, so if your annual rent is less than 50,000, the cap will be five weeks rent. Was it five weeks? Yeah, five weeks rent. So if you say, for example, um, you want to take somebody's deposit, if the annual rent isn't more than um, 50k, 50,000, that's quite a lot. But anyway, if the annual rent isn't more than 50,000, you can only take five weeks rent. If it's more than 50,000 um, 50, for the year that you're going to collect, you can take six weeks rent. Um, there's going to be three year tenancy terms coming into force, not in force yet, but it does mean that um, tenants do get a little bit more security. They're not having to think every 12 months, oh, the rent's going to go up. Is the landlord going to want his place back and stuff like that? So I think the three year tenancy rule is OK, is good. Once again, for, ten for um, landlords, they might not want to commit, especially if they haven't got a great tenant in there. They might not want to commit to three years, but it goes with the territory, I'm afraid. The thing is with um, renting out property, it is supposed to secure you an income over and above what you're already getting. That's the reason why people rent out. They have their own home, they rent it out, and they're hoping that the house that they're renting out is going to give them enough money to pay for the house that they're renting out, plus the mortgage or the rent or whatever the mortgage is on the other property. It's meant to cover all of that. A lot of it doesn't, but this is why the majority of people do it. It's the only way they can do it. They can't afford to pay for two properties or three properties or four properties, depending on how much. So each one is meant to pay for the other. 
um, and the one uh, and they're normally interest only so the one your main your main home your primary home is supposed to be the one with a repayment mortgage on and all the other ones are usually interest only um, the only thing is is that what they're saying is is that with the three-year tenancy agreement that they're working towards it might frighten off investors but why would it I mean, you have to, the same way you want your security, so do tenants. They want their security as well. So I think it's unfair to kind of think, oh, yeah, I'm going to make a quick buck. I'm going to rent my house out for six months or a year while I do this and while I do that. And then when I come back, I want my house back. And then that person who's kind of, it's not like it's a room. It's a whole house. And then that person who's kind of set up that house as their home, there has to be turfed out and look for somewhere else and start all over again. So I think three years is good. And they reckon the average where tenant stays into a property is four years. So yeah, three years, I think it's a good, I think it's a good um, deal to make. Um, the decision which um, fees to ban haven't been finalised. Uh, the government is considering whether or not the landlord should set the fees. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Um, but the fees that can be charged for at the moment are contract changes or termination when requested by the tenant. So if the tenant decides that they want to change in the contract, that cost goes to them. And if they decide that they want to terminate the contract or the lease, that cost goes to them. Um, utilities, utilities, of course, um, communication services like Sky, broadband, all that kind of stuff, of course. Um, council tax, of course, they all go to the tenant. Issues for which the tenant is at fault, like the lost keys. The lost keys are really expensive. That's a tenant's responsibility and damage to the property, of course. That's the tenant's responsibility. So it's, I think it's kind of a fair legislation. It's not as if they're saying there's no fees at all that should be paid by the tenant. But what they're saying is things like referencing, which is benefiting you, and the inventory, which is benefiting you, should be borne by the landlord. There is some kind of fear that landlords are going to factor that into increased rents. But they also have to think that they want to rent their place. They need to rent their place as much as people want to rent a place from landlords. So they have to be reasonable and they have to make it in such a way that people can afford to rent so that they are getting their income and the renters are getting a place to live, which is relatively secure. Um, they've got some new legislation on the HMO licensing extensions. Um, yeah. You know those multiple um, homes where you've got more than five people, they're all unrelated and they live in a home and the landlord collects rent from each one of the rooms or whatever it is. Um, it used to apply only to three-storey buildings. It's now applying to any property where more than five people unrelated are renting rooms or whatever it is they're renting they're going to have to pay for a licensing fee a hmo licensing fee so i don't know how much that costs they're gonna to have to look that in i'm just putting it out there so you know landlords as well um, even in non-hmo properties are having to um a license is coming up for landlords um where's that now so some non-hmo properties require a license um the license is going to be about 500 to 600 i checked some of the areas um luton is group c bedford is group c so they will require um a license but um with those uh, areas it applies to HMOs mostly. They are thinking about the selective um, licensing, which will apply to regular um, landlords all over the place, but that's under consideration at the moment. It's not in force in, in Luton or Bedford, but in places like Peterborough, Southwark, which are Group Bs, um, it's in force now, Northampton. I'm actually going to put a link below, and you'll be able to tell whether or not your property 
needs a license because a lot of landlords they don't know that the property they're renting out now needs a license i think this came out in april um i know it was being worked on in october but a lot of people don't know these things anyway um section 21 laws about the eviction that's being reviewed um Oh, with regard to the licenses, they have selective licenses, additional licensing and mandatory licensing. Mandatory licensing, I think that's for the HMO. There's also going to be a client money protection scheme, protects the rent um, the tenant pays to the letting agent if the agent goes out of business. So that's coming into force. Um, energy performance certificate for a property. It has to have a rating of at least E. Properties with G and F can no longer be legally rented out. So you better go and check your energy efficiency certificate. Make sure it's above E because if it's below, you're not supposed to be renting out. It massive fines. Even with this licensing thing, you can get a, you can be fined up to 20,000 if you haven't got a license and they find out that you're a landlord. Um, what else is there? Um, I've already talked about the multiple occupation licensing rules. That's the HMO. Um, oh yeah, um, there's something to do with tax for landlords. Uh, between 2019 and 2020 tax year, Landlords will only be able to claim 25% of their mortgage on tax relief, mortgage tax relief, when filing taxes, down from 50% um, in 2018, 2019. Um, oh, and now also, which is interesting, they've got the Homes in brackets Fitness for Human Habitation Act. Um, the tenant can now take a landlord to court if the house is damp, if it's not fit for purpose, if it smells, if there's a lot of noise. Um, you're making it hard for landlords. But, you know, I, I think a lot of slum landlords or rogue landlords have made it bad. They've actually got a rogue landlord database now for landlords who have criminal records, that they're being able to track them down. Um, They've also set, trying to set up a, what's it called? A, uh, what is it called? Oh yeah, I found it. It's called the Rent Recognition Challenge and it links a record renters pay, their payment history with their credit scores so that um, if they move from one place to another, there's a record of how they've paid and so the um, landlord doesn't have to kind of go through all those um, checks so much. I mean, it's going to be in a central place. I don't know if that's finalised yet, though. So this is quite exhausting. I guess it's because it's not my area, really. Um, but I just wanted to make sure I covered all the main things. Um, Capping of deposits, landlord's claim for lost keys, capping three-year tenancy terms. Mm -hmm. Home fitness and human habitation. Oh yeah, you know that home fitness, that, that is really important. You know, because sometimes you see um, that program, I don't know if you've seen it, um, My Nightmare Landlord or something, and the place is atrocious. They've got rats, there's mould going all the way down the, down the wall. I, it's the, the, you know, some of the um, utensils aren't working. I mean, I believe that they rent those out to people who are not legal in the country. But even so, it should still be habitable. I mean, I don't know how this is going to work because I think it's quite good in one way because it will stop them from trying to get people who are not legal in the country and renting them out and giving them, you know, places that are not fit. They're not fit for habitation. So I'm glad they're doing it. I feel sorry for the people who don't have a place to live, but it'd be better that they don't have a place to live than to pay rent for a place like that and be exploited. 
Um, and Glenn Fortel was a prime example, and I think that is what spurred this on, this um, fitness for human habitation, because none of their fire their fire exits, they, didn't, they only had one fire exit, if you remember. The uh, smoke alarms weren't working. The stairwell was too thin. Two people couldn't even cross. That was, that was a nightmare. And then all that cladding. So, yeah, so that's what's brought out this um, new act. According to the Express, one million homes pose hazards and um, 2.5 million people may benefit if they can afford to go to court, um, you know, for homes that are not fit for purpose and they're renting out. Yeah, so I think I've about covered everything. Oh, something else. Also, what's coming in is the room sizes. Or it might be already in. I'm not quite sure. I just wrote down these notes. I didn't put dates or times. But there needs to be requirement and a new requirement for room sizes when you're renting out. You know, like some people, they 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 um, get a cupboard that the boiler was in and try to make it into a room and rent it out. I mean, it's it's diabolical. Anyway, now you have the small a single room. Has to, a one bedroom has to be the twice the size of a king size bed. That's for one bedroom. Like I said, I'm going to put the links and you'll be able to see what the room sizes are. But for one bedroom, has to be twice the size of a king size bed. So no trying to cram as many people into your house and breaking down walls and splitting rooms and everything to cram as many people in there as possible. Um. Yeah, so they have got the the size requirements for a two bedroom. I think it was a parking space or something, like, but that's relative, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's it for now. So, happy renting for both. <laughs>